Hello friends, welcome back. In this tutorial, we will study about flow control and error control. In previous tutorial, we studied about framing. Now, in this tutorial, we will study about flow control and error control. Uh, the most important responsibilities of the data link layer are error control and flow control, right? Now, first of all, we will study about flow control. Uh, flow control is one of the most important duties of the data link layer. Now, what happens is the speed at which a receiving device can process incoming data is limited. And also the amount of memory which a receiving device has uh, to store incoming data is also limited. So, the flow of data should be like that. It does not overwhelm the receiver, right? The flow of data should be like that. It does not overwhelm the receiver. Now, the data which uh, come at receiver, it must be checked and processed before it can be used. And the rate of such processing is usually slower than the rate of transmission. Therefore, each uh, receiving device has a block of memory called buffer, which is uh, reserved for uh, storing incoming data until they are processed. Now, if this uh, buffer begins to fill up, then the receiver must be able to tell the sender to halt transmission until it is once again able to receive. So what happens uh, this uh, flow control? The flow control refers to a set of procedures used to restrict the amount of data that the sender can send before waiting for acknowledgement. Right? So what is the flow control? Uh, the flow control refers to a set of procedures uh, which are used to restrict the amount of data that the sender can send before waiting for acknowledgement. Right? Actually, uh, the flow of data should be like that. It does not overwhelm the receiver, right? Now, what is this uh, error control? Now, error control is both error detection and error correction, right? Error control is both error detection and error correction. It allows the receiver to inform the sender of uh, any frame lost or damaged in the transmission and uh, coordinates the retransmission of those frames by the sender, right? So what happens? Uh, this uh, error control. This error control allows the receiver to inform the sender of any frame lost or damaged in transmission and coordinates the retransmission of those frames by the sender. Now, we will see how the data link layer can combine framing, flow control and error control to achieve the delivery of data from one node to another. So, what happens for that purpose, uh, there are protocols. And uh, these protocols are normally implemented in software by using uh, one of uh, the common programming languages. And uh, these protocols can be divided into two categories. One which can be used for noiseless channels, uh, that is error-free channels, and the other uh, which can be used for noisy channels uh, that is error creating channels so the protocols uh, which are for uh, noiseless channels are simplest and another one is stop and wait protocol right and the protocols which are for noisy channels right the protocols uh, uh, which are uh, used for uh, noisy channels these are stop and wait automatic repeat request protocol go back and automatic repeat request protocol selective repeat automatic repeat request protocol we will study about all of these protocols right now what happens uh, these all protocols are unidirectional right these all protocols are unidirectional uh, yeah, these uh, in these protocols what happen data frames travel from the sender to the receiver but uh, the special frames called acknowledgement and uh, negative acknowledgement right uh, these frames can flow in the opposite direction for flow and error control purposes. So what happens is these all protocols we are going to study and these all protocols are unidirectional. In these uh, protocols data frames travel from the sender to the receiver but uh, these special frames called acknowledgement and negative acknowledgement frames right they can flow in the opposite direction for flow and error control purposes right. Uh, what happens first of all we are going to study the protocols uh, which are used for noiseless channels right so in this case what will happen in this case we have assumed that we have an ideal channel in which no frames are lost duplicated or corrupted right so in this case protocols do not have error control because here we have considered that the channel is perfect noiseless channel right 
Now, first of all, uh, we will study this uh, simplest protocol, right? Uh, this simplest protocol, right? Uh, it is used for noiseless channels, right? And uh, this simplest protocol has no flow or error control, right? Uh, it is a unidirectional protocol as uh, I have already told you that all the protocols are unidirectional, right? So it is an unidirectional protocol in which uh, data frames travel only in one direction that is from the sender to receiver. Now what happens in this protocol there is no need for flow control. Why there is no need for flow control in this protocol? Here it is assumed that the receiver can handle any frame it receives with the processing time that is small enough to be negligible. And uh, when the data link layer of the receiver gives the data packet to its network layer, then the network layer also accept the packet immediately. Right? So in this case, the receiver can never be overwhelmed with the incoming frames. So there is no need for flow control in this scheme. Right? Now we will study about uh, another protocol which can be used for noiseless channels. The another protocol which can be used for noiseless channels is stop and wait protocol. Previously we studied about the simplest protocol. The simplest protocol uh, can also be used for noiseless channels. Right? But uh, this simplest uh, protocol does not have flow control. Right? And uh, this stop and wait protocol which can be used for noiseless channels, it has flow control. Now what happens when data frames arrive at the receiver site faster than they can be processed then these frames must be stored until they are used and normally what happens if the receiver does not have enough storage space especially if it is receiving the data from many sources right so therefore uh, this may result in either the discarding of frames or denial of service right so what happens to prevent the receiver from being overwhelmed with frames? In the stop and wait protocol, the sender sends one frame right, and stops until it receives confirmation from the receiver. And after receiving the confirmation, it sends the next frame. right? So what happens in a stop and wait protocol? In a stop and wait protocol, uh, this is a stop and wait protocol has flow control right in this protocol the sender sends one frame and stops until it receives confirmation from the receiver when it receives confirmation it sends the next frame right now what happens in this uh, protocol the sender sends one frames and wait for feedback from the receiver right now what happens after the data frame arrives at the receiver, the receiver sends an acknowledgement frame to acknowledge the receipt and allows the sender to send the next frame. When the acknowledgement frame arrives at the sender, the sender sends the next frame. Right? 